Hey, I think that's the first time I heard about that date night uh, life group. I'm excited about that. I'm going to tell Miss Crystal about that. We're going to find out about it. Everybody say kingdom. kingdom. I want to teach this morning on the topic. I, I, I'd love to say that this is a series, but the truth of it is I'm more of a, of a topical minister. And what I mean by that is I, I'll get on a topic and I want to make sure that you get a firm understanding of it more than I just want to do a series. Even though there's nothing wrong with the concept of teaching a series, I want you to get a very firm grasp of something before we move on. Because when we move on, we're going to move on to a different topic. So um, I, oftentimes I don't stick an end point on it, on how long we'll be teaching on a topic. And, and this particular topic about kingdom is pretty much the only thing Jesus ever talked about on planet Earth. It's pretty much the only thing that uh, John the Baptist talked about whenever he was teaching about repentance. He kept talking about how the kingdom of God was at hand. So for us, it's imperative that we get a massive understanding of kingdom. Everybody say kingdom. Yeah. To start with, uh, Jesus didn't just die so you can go to heaven because you being in heaven was not the original will of God. The original will of God was for mankind to represent the kingdom of heaven on planet earth with dominion and authority here. So if the will of God was for you just to go to heaven, when you gave your life to Jesus, you would be evacuated out of here instantaneously. But the reality is, is he has left you here because he has a purpose and a calling on your life for you to fulfill and to be an ambassador of this other kingdom that you are now a citizen of. Everybody say citizen. It's important to understand citizenship because when you understand citizenship, you begin to understand rights. So for instance, in America, we have the Constitution. We have the Bill of Rights, which is the first listing of the rights that we effectively have. One of the uh, uh, rights that we have is the right to freedom of speech. That is not the case all over the planet. So it is related to two different things. It's related to your rights are related to your position and it is related to the precepts allotted by the kingdom that you are a part of. I'm gonna say that again because it's a bit of a mouthful. They are related, your rights are related to your position and they are related to the precepts that are allotted by the kingdom that you are a part of. Let me give you an example. So in America, we have freedom of speech. I think it's an absolute disgrace, but people have been protected uh, that burn the American flag under the concept of freedom of speech. I want to reiterate that because I don't want it cut up on YouTube. I think it is a disgrace that people burn the American flag personally. Now, that being said, you go into some of these dictator ruled countries and start burning their flag and they will light you on fire. Because in America, you have, a, you have certain rights that are predicated on your position and the precepts or regulations or normalities that are uh, brought about by the kingdom or in America's say, the republic or the democracy that you are a part of. So if you start trying to declare the rights of an American when you are in another country, you could really have some, some bad things happen. Does that make sense? In America, you can say almost anything and you're protected under the, the right to freedom of speech. But if you get, and for instance, this is just a, a, an easy one, there are countries that are, that are ruled by what they call Sharia law. It's the Islamic, uh, really hardline law. And if you say certain things, you won't just get arrested. You can be beaten. You can be sentenced to hard lip just for what comes out of your mouth. So in other words, you could be an American, listen, in a different country. And in America, you have these rights. But when you get into this other kingdom, now all of a sudden, those rights are no longer afforded to you because you are in a different position. Right now, I'm in College Station, Texas. But if I were to go run in my mouth in a country that, that 
uh, uh, talked about or that enforced Sharia law. I, I could not just claim the fact that I'm American because my position, you hear what I'm saying? My position would be different at that time. I would be positioned in another country. So now I am subject to that country's regulations or precepts. But while I'm in America, there are some beautiful rights that I have. So that gives us a little bit of a picture. I want to talk to you though, not just about America. I want to talk to you about the kingdom of God. Because when you are a citizen, somebody say citizen, when you're a citizen of the kingdom of God, you got some rights in this thing. But here's the deal. Your rights are predicated on your position and they are predicated on the precepts that the kingdom that you are a citizen of dictates. In other words, if you're not in the kingdom, but you start trying to declare your rights as a citizen, you will be surprised. Matter of fact, Jesus went about, the Bible says, and if somebody was possessed by the devil, uh, Jesus would walk to them and just say, hey, devil, get out of them. And he would evict the enemy. And the reason that those demons want to get into a person and possess them is because demons do not have any dominion on planet earth. People do. So they want to get inside of a person or to oppress or try to move a person around so that they can act like they have some dominion, but what they're really doing is they are utilizing the dominion of that person. You see what I'm saying? So Jesus would walk up and evict them on the spot. So get out. The disciples would do it too. And sometimes Jesus uh, had to step in for the disciples because they didn't, quite, they didn't quite have it together yet. And some things came out because of prayer and fasting. But, but all, the time, all the while, Jesus would walk around and he would heal sick people. He would cast the enemy out of people. He would, uh, he would speak hard against religious people that tried to make it a challenge to get to God. Come on, it's not a challenge to get to God. The blood of Jesus is accessible for every person. But the, 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 what you would find later in the scripture in the book of Acts is some guys were watching the disciples cast out devils and they decided they were going to do it. So they walked up to this, to this guy who was possessed by the devil, who was beating everybody up, doing a bunch of crazy stuff, kind of like a terrorist. And, and what happened is, is he, they say, hey, in the name of Jesus, get out. And they looked at him and said this. They said, Jesus, we know. And Paul, we know. But who are you? In other words, I'm not certain you're a citizen of the kingdom you're trying to represent. Because you can know the God of the Bible. You can know the Bible of our God and not know the God of our Bible. The Bible is not a, it's not a spell book. Come on, somebody. Come on. It's not, it's not a, it's not a book full of mysticisms that you can tap into. No, the first thing that has to happen is you got to get yourself positioned as a citizen of this kingdom. Let's give God a hand of praise right there for giving us access to the kingdom of God. So you got to get yourself positioned as a citizen of this kingdom. Well, how do you get positioned? Well, in America, if you're born in America, let me tell you something. You're an American. Same in the kingdom. When you get born again into the kingdom of God, you are a citizen of the kingdom of God. Now, and a kingdom, a kingdom has borders. Let me tell you where the kingdom, the kingdom's borders, the kingdom of God's borders stop. They stop just past wherever you're standing. In other words, everywhere your foot lands, you own it. Everywhere you go, God goes with you. Everywhere you go, God goes before you. In America, if you get over close to the Atlantic, you better watch your mouth by the time you get over to the other side. Come on, somebody. When you get to the Pacific, you better start minding what you say before you end up in China because they'll throw you in jail for what you say in China. But in the kingdom of God, everywhere you go belongs to our God. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So when you become a citizen, somebody say citizen, a citizen of this kingdom, you realize your position as a citizen grants you some rights and everywhere you go, you're standing on what belongs to God. 
So as a citizen, you've got to start standing on those rights. But then not only are you positioned, it's based off of the precepts that the kingdom has allotted. In other words, if, if, if you were to decide, I'm going to do everything I want to do contrary to the word, you're now operating outside of the precepts of the kingdom and the results are no longer promised. Like if you were to bake a cake, if it told you to put in this much uh, flour, this much sugar, this much egg, this much oil, this much uh, baking powder, and you decided just off the cuff that you're going to throw some, you know, wolf brand chili in it. <laughs> Boy, it sounds terrible. Somebody just dropped their phone after I said that. I said, my God, I was about to tweet that. Now I'm not. Chili, wolf brand chili. I'm talking about with beans. Could you imagine eating a vanilla cake, wolf brand chili with beans in it? Jesus, take the wheel and the mixer. Come on, somebody. You can't just go putting anything in the recipe and acting like it's going to show up the same. You can't change the recipe and expect the same results. So in the kingdom, not only is your position determined by where you are born, on all the, the addition to that is it's the precepts that you follow that dictate the promises you walk in. So for us, we've got to get really good at finding out not only what does our position say, but also what do the precepts of the word say? Because here's what we have in this kingdom. In this kingdom, there are massive resources, unlimited. And there's no limit on what God wants to send through you. In this kingdom is healing that flowed from the blood of Jesus himself. In this kingdom is immediate freedom from drugs and alcohol. Immediate. In this freedom is immediate deliverance from death, hell, and the grave. In this kingdom is immediate freedom from all of your shame. All the things that you did wrong, God's not holding it against you. But we've got to get to the place where we understand our position and then we begin to get a revelation on the precepts of the kingdom because the Bible says when that guy tried to throw out the devil, throw out the demon out of that guy, the demon turned around and said to him, he said, Jesus, I know but Paul, I know, but you're going to need to show me some ID. And he wasn't a citizen. And the Bible says that he was stripped naked, beaten, and run out of the city. How many of you, you'd rather that not happen to you? I'll tell you this quick story, then we'll move on. When, when Crystal and I moved here, we didn't know one human in the Brazos Valley. And our plan of action was to follow God we would walk the streets, try to win people to God, invite them to church, and people began to come. God brought us phenomenal people alongside us that have helped us carry the banner of loving people and pointing them to Christ, and it's been a beautiful season. But when we went to buy this building, oh, by the way, we're about to build another bigger, beautiful building, praise the Lord. But years ago, when we bought this building, I remember... We were about a month away and we needed, I think it was like, oh, maybe it was a week away. It was close. We needed like $50,000 more to buy the building. And I remember I had, I had built, y'all know those trifold things you did like science projects with, cardboard, you could stand them up on the deal. I had, I had printed out a calendar that, that got to the contract closing date. And so I would, I would mark out with a pen every time we went by the day. And I even knew how much we needed on that certain day to stay on track. And let me just tell you, we were nowhere near track, okay? Nowhere near it. So we were sitting there and it was getting close and, and I was like, man, I don't even know. And I was sitting, well, I was sitting in the living room and, and the kids were asleep and, and Pastor Crystal was there. And, and I remember I just felt like I didn't have any faith. I don't know who, who's ever been there where you just felt like you didn't have any faith. I felt like I was the only woman. I said that, Jake. Everybody was like, what's wrong with that guy? We're going to follow you around, find out where your faith runs out. Praise the Lord. Anyway, so I'm sitting there. I was like, man, I don't feel like I have any faith right now. I just feel, you know, but, but I, I know I don't live by my feelings. Like I, I'm, I'm trained that way. 
You say, who trains you? The word of God trained me. Come on, somebody. So, so I said, man, you know, I just don't have any faith. So here's what I did. I said, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to pray until I feel faith. Now, I don't have to feel faith to have faith, but I said, I'm going to do that. If that takes me, you know, 24 hours, I don't care. I just, I, I know God is with us. I know he's faithful. I'm willing to look like a fool, but I want to make him look like a fool. Come on, somebody. And I said, I'm going to pray until I feel some faith. And I, I went and I, we keep some oil in the house because we just, we just believe in, in the Bible. And so we, we put a, I put a bunch of oil on my hands and I smeared it around like that. And I didn't know what to do. So I just put that, that big trifold thing on the kitchen table and I just smeared my hands all around it. And all the, the, the red and the black from the Sharpies just started started smearing. And I just put my hands there and I, I said, I'm going to pray, but I didn't know what to pray. But the Bible says when you don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit will pray for you. So I was praying in, 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 in an unknown tongue, in, in tongues, um, in accordance with the book of Acts and, and many other examples in the Bible. But I was just praying because the Bible also says in the book of Jude, listen to this, that we build ourselves up on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. If you pray in the Holy Spirit, if you pray in tongues, you got to know whenever you pray in the Holy Spirit, it's like recharging your battery. You only have so much time with your cell phone for that sucker's got to be plugged in. It's the same thing with your spirit man. You need to build your faith up and the Holy Spirit praying in that unknown tongue can do that for you. If you don't pray in tongues, you need to ask God for that gift because he'll give it to you as no respecter of persons. But what happens, I was sitting there praying in tongues and praying in tongues and just, just praying and, and praying and praying and praying. I felt nothing. Come on, somebody. Nothing, not a zilch, zero, not a thing. And after, I don't know, 5, 10, 15 minutes, I'm sitting there. I guess I'm annoying Crystal because she comes over and, and she, I'm really not annoying. She's a beautiful, wonderful wife. And she comes and she puts her hands on top of my hands and she's praying in the spirit. So we're sitting there and I'm sitting there. I'm like, Lord, I'm not getting up till I feel some faith. And, 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 and about the time she touched my hands, something happened to me. And all of a sudden I'm standing right outside this building, right out here in the spirit, you know, something happened. The Bible says God will give you dreams and visions. Best I can tell it was a vision. So I'm standing there and standing on the pinnacle of this building, which would be kind of right behind me up at the top, uh, standing on the pinnacle. I can't remember standing or sitting, but sitting there, I see a demon. And if you've ever seen a demon, you don't wonder what a demon looks like. You say, what do they look like? I couldn't describe them if I had to, but I knew it's what it was. How do you know? It was in my knower. You know how you just know some things? So I'm standing there. I, I, I've, I've left my, my kitchen, which is, you know, 15, 20 miles away. And, and for all practical purpose, I'm standing there. Again, physically, spiritually, I'm not here to try to split hairs. I just knew it was happening. And I'm sitting there and, and there's this, there's this demon sitting there. And it says to me, it says, who are you? And I thought, oh my God, <laughs> cause I know the word where the demon says, you know, Jesus, we know, and Paul, we know, but who are you? And I was like, oh no, am I unknown spiritually? And all of a sudden before any more of that doubt, could reverberate in my mind. My spirit man said, you know exactly who I am. And all of a sudden I felt the authority shift because when I first saw it, it felt like I was talking to something that had some, some stroke. But the minute I said, you know exactly who I am, I realized who had the power in the equation. So I said to him, I said, you know exactly who I am. And I'm here to tell you that your time is over. You're not going to rule and reign here anymore. You can tell all your principalities and all the other pow powers around here that, th that, that the Brazos Valley is about to have a move of God that the Brazos Valley's never seen. And you're going to go, and you're going to go right now in the name of my king, King Jesus. And he gets up and he starts walking across the sky, headed that way, probably to Caldwell, all you Caldwell people. Now, <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Everybody from Caldwell was like, that's not funny. I'll tell you what. I guarantee it. Anyway, goes walking across the sky. And there was a guy I read a lot about, a guy named Lester Summerall. 
Lester Sumrall, he was, a, he was a man of God that would go all over the world. And he was known for just terrorizing uh, demon powers, okay? And he was in this one deal, and, and there's this story of him where he had cast this demon out of some witch doctor or something. And he's, he's, he's in this, 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 this little room, he said he had a little bitty window, he said it was super hot, and he was laid down, going to go to bed. Little bed, little room, little window. And all of a sudden, he said it got ice cold in the room. And there was a stench that filled the room. And, and, and the bed began to shake. And it moved across. And all of a sudden, he realized, hey, that's that demon he threw out of the witch doctor earlier. And he said, I thought I told you, you don't have any place here. I'm here representing Jesus. Get out of here. And I mean right now. And boom, all of a sudden, the room got hot again. The mosquitoes showed back up. The smell went away. And he looked down, and he realized the bed was, a, was, was moved away from the wall. So he stands up. He looks out the window and says, hey, demon, get back in here. And all of a sudden, here comes the stench. Here comes the cold air. He said, when you came in here, that bed was up against the wall. You put it back right now in the name of Jesus. Puts it back up against the wall. Said, now go and don't come back. He goes, doesn't come back. So I knew that story. And since I was kind of feeling it, come on, somebody. <laughs> this thing's walking across the sky. Said, hey, wait a minute. Get back over here. God is my witness like a soldier obeying orders, it turned and, and walked around to me and stood at attention. And I said, I know you know who I am, but who are you? Listen to what he said to me, especially if you've been in this area for any part of your life. He said, my name is Confusion, and I have ruled here for years. I said, well, you're gone now. And he turned and walked off. Let's give God a big hand of praise. See, your position and the precepts of God dictate the rights that you're walking in. So as a citizen, the first thing you have to do is be positioned as one. You've got to be born into this kingdom, born again into this kingdom. Then you begin to understand and realize your position, or your, the precepts that God has for you to offer. Because the reality is, is even when you're in the kingdom and a citizen, the enemy's goal is to get you isolated. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 8, be sober, vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom, that means people, whom, a person, whom he may devour. How does he do it? Like a lion. Have you ever seen National Geographic? The lions don't try to jump on the whole herd. They try to find one that's alone. Because a wildebeest is not built to deal with a lion but 10 of them stomp lions in the ground. So they're trying to find the one thing that's out there by itself. Just think about this for just a second. Jesus Christ, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, after he was baptized, was led of the spirit in the wilderness and he goes and fasts for 40 days and all of a sudden the devil shows up, talks to him and tempts him. I'll offer this to you. The only time we ever see the devil speak directly to Jesus that I'm aware of is when he was alone. The enemy wants you isolated because you gotta make the decision to choose Christ by yourself, no doubt. But at the same time, that's the last time you're supposed to live alone. I'm not talking about married, not married. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the body of Christ because if the devil can get you isolated, he can pick you off. And then, then you feel like you're the only one. Just be honest. With a show of hands, honest to God, I'm going to lift my hand up preeminently because I'm in this. Have you ever felt like you're the only one going through something? The, the truth is we're all going through it, whatever it is. The challenge is to not let what you're going through isolate you. Because it is in isolation that you become a larger target or a more prevalent target. He wants to, to get you by yourself so you'll just be alone with your thoughts. 
He wants to get you by yourself. Because if you get by yourself, there's only two voices, yours and his. Oh, the voice of the Lord's always there, but I've found that it's, it's more evident because the Bible says where two or three gather, there I am. The scripture says, don't forsake the gathering together as some people do. Why? Because that's where our strength comes from. That's where we see something about ourselves we couldn't see. Amen. I appreciate it. It's very nice. When people come to me and say, oh, I'll see them at the grocery store or whatever. Oh my gosh, you, you were talking right to me. I'm going right through that situation. I'm like, I don't have a clue. I'm just reading the Bible out loud. Because when we get together, now all of a sudden, well, let me just, let me just read this. You don't have to turn there. Just let me read it. Matthew 18, 18. Verily I say unto you, whatever you'll bind on earth, Shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you bind in the seen realm is bound in the world you can't see. And whatever you loose shall be loose. In other words, whatever you lock up is locked up. It's cold and flu season. Not in my house. Why? I lock it up. I bind it. It ain't coming in my house. That's the way it is. Period. Well, what happens if a symptom shows up? We double down. What happens if I get a bad report? What happens what happened to this? Well, I don't know. What happens if Goliath shows up? We fight. What happens if he doesn't? We worship. If I had time, I'd teach you about Nehemiah. And they had a tool in one hand and a sword in the other. And they were working on the feet, working on the wall, working on the wall. All of a sudden, attack come and they'd fight for a while, fight for a while. The enemy would run off and they'd go right back to working on the wall, working on the wall, working on the wall. Because there's some stuff in your life you're going to have to realize you aren't called to live a passive life. But if you get alone, you feel alone. So he says, whatever you bind is bound. Whatever you loose is loose. And this is the verse I really want you to hear. Again, I'm saying to you, here's the thing, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, somebody say anything, yeah. touching anything, they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. In other words, the devil knows, the devil knows that if he can get you isolated, his odds of picking you off are that much higher. And don't get it twisted. Sometimes you're going to have to encourage yourself in the valley. But you make sure that you're not putting yourself in the valley. Because there's some people that are living in the valley when God has an oasis for you already. The devil knows they can get you isolated. The odds of him picking you off are that much higher. And once you get born again, he's not trying to necessarily take your soul. He's just trying to get you to be inefficient while you're here. Don't tell anybody about Jesus. And sometimes the greatest way that he can do that is to keep you so busy worrying about everything else. Oh, I'm the only one going through it. Nobody understands me. The devil is a liar. Everybody's going through something. Especially Jake. Come on, somebody. But the other reason, this might be the most important one, I close with this, is he knows if you can get with another citizen and you can touch and agree, you are a nuclear weapon in the spirit. So he wants you out. That's why Jesus said, if there's a hundred sheep and one gets out by itself, I'm leaving the hundred because the hundred can help each other. But I'm going to go find that one. I'm going to bring it back to the flock because the minute they can get close, now they can touch and agree. And the power of agreement in the citizens of the kingdom of God is outlandishly strong. 
and the devil knows it. That's why he doesn't want you coming to church. That's why he doesn't want you going to a life group. That's why he doesn't want you grabbing hands with your spouse and praying in the morning. That's why he doesn't want you agreeing with your children that they're going to have favor uh, at school. That's why he doesn't want you believing God with somebody. That's why he doesn't want you touching and agreeing because he knows if two or three gather, Jesus is there. And if those believers touch and agree on anything, God, our father is going to make sure that it happens all the way from the throne. So I'll say this, maybe you've never joined a life group. Maybe you say you're too busy. Let me explain something. Everybody in this room and everybody watching online is too busy. To say yes to one thing, you have to say no to something else. So I'm saying this spring, if you gotta move your schedule around, move it around. But get with believers. Get with those, get with those who are like you in that regard. Oh, not to ostracize ourselves from the world, but rather to better prepare ourselves for the time that we are accessing the world. Because when you're alone, he goes about like a roaring lion trying to destroy. But when you're with other believers, anything you touch and agree on, you can have. Let's give God a big hand of praise right there. Matter of fact, let's stand to our feet. Hey guys, we just wanna thank you for joining us online. We hope you enjoyed today's worship experience. Here at New Heights, we're passionate about two things, loving people and pointing them to Christ. So help us by liking, sharing, and commenting on everything you see come across our social media. It means the world to us. If you like what you experienced today, you can replay this message or any other message at www.newheightschurch.info. So, what are you sorry? What are you talking about? Three.